So, uh, I am Giacomo Virgilio, as uh, previously stated. I'm sorry for the delay. I can see your faces. So I'll try to be as quick as possible. I don't want to be eaten up by you. And so, as previous, previously said, the bilateral agreement signed by the CNCE with Sokabau for Germany, BUAC for Austria, and UCF for France were born from a methodology of confrontation that started not only from the need to protect companies in their state that post workers in other countries, but to compare in particular the contractual homogeneity and the labor cost existing between the various countries. This is because any aspect of mobility within the European Union, which must be absolutely guaranteed, must also have a basis of homogeneity, of cost for the company and protection for workers, beyond which, behind the concept of the free movement, there is a strong risk of social dumping. The agreement's hypothesis had already been carried out by CNCE previously. But the problem that has arisen is that the construction market, despite the legislation and the programmaticity at the European level on free movement, is considered protected. This implies that the companies of the country are not willing to compete with external parties, not considering the necessary distinction between companies that enter creating disturbances on the market and those that fit instead on equal terms. This was one of the fundamental starting points for the analysis of the National Committee. Furthermore, the change in the presence of Italian companies abroad was no longer linked solely to large companies that carry out work of considerable size, but also to medium and small businesses. This new working scenario has led to similar protectionist reaction in the European countries mentioned above for Italy. Naturally, also the posted worker, because of this expansion of the manpower sent in the other European countries, they saw their benefits splitting in the lack of continuity of registration to the Italian bilateral system of welfare funds that consequently resulted in the loss of important services such as, for example, the APE, a professional seniority pay. The discriminating factor on which we worked on was on demonstrating the differences in foreign presence on the territory. The one that uses unfair competition and the exploitation of workers as a weapon, which are not our responsibility, but of the public bodies in charge, and the regular companies, Italian, Austrian, French, German, that are protected by allowing them to work in these countries with similar conditions. Precisely with regard to the latter, the parties involved in the stipulation of bilateral agreements have not only analyzed the cost of bilateral bodies, because this would also lead us astray, given the different reg regime developed in the countries of interest, but we analyze the entire amount of cost foreseen by the sectoral bargaining, and also all the indirect costs foreseen by the state legis legislation. As regards Italy, just, uh, just think of the Cassa Integrazione, the temporary layoff scheme, or the inail premium. Thus, calculating the expenditure in terms of contribution and pay of the total work for a company of these four countries, obviously, the comparison has always been made between two countries at a time, facilit facilitated by the first conducted with our sister Sokabau. This overall comparison made it possible to state that the company accredited by one of these signatory countries did not carry out social dumping. The problem, however, found with the other nations on equal terms, as just stated, is the absence of possibility to manage this convention. Is it possible to say, we can say, that the companies do not carry out social dumping, but it must be possible too to demonstrate that it applies the contract and the rules of its country of origin. So it is precisely the function of the bilateral body, not only limited to the prerogatives assigned within a national sphere that can provide this type of certification of regularity at European le level, like, for example, a DURC in Italy, raising its value at international level. 
As for us, but we believe the same thing happened for uh, uh, German, French, and Austrian France, we in Italy have brought the results of this comparison to the examination of the social partners. Being ourselves a private entity established and managed by ANCE, artists and association, cooperatives, small businesses, trade union of CGL, Chisel and Will, we would like to point out that it was not just a technical agreement, but the signing of the agreement is a political act signed by the social partners through the CNCE for us, following a line of the Italian Inspection Federation and European Trade Union Federation, FIEC and FETBB, which have always supported the chance on confrontation and social dialogue and the possibility that even through paritarian organization, it will, be, it will be possible to establish a network of relationships in the construction world in the various European countries. The European Association, and in our case, the Italian Association, have pursued two main concepts. Firstly, to guarantee to the companies that regularly apply the, contract, the contractual and state legislation to be able to work on the, wheel, on the whole European market. And secondly, to affirm that where bilateral agreements cannot be applied, there are economic obstacles, such as the, different, the, the different contributory weight that the company has to face in confrontation to the host country. For these cases, the social partners can thus pay more attention to, the avo to avoiding the social dumping. Today, this network involving four countries is a piece of European market that not only has in common an observatory on the mobility of workers and the need to give common rules on the posting of workers, but above all, a homogeneous ground of contractual protection, legislative norms, coverage of the welfare state for workers. It is enforced by natural mobility as it moves within four territories that are, as already stated, a substantially homogeneous portion of Europe. However, applying this convention requires a qualitative leap in our relationship. It is hoped that the social partners in the first instance should carry out a comparison study on labor costs in other countries interested in signing these agreements. And in a second phase, these same actors should find or create a body that can, interface, that can interface with their own in order to continue the certification of regularity internationally over time. Up to now, in a rather intricate way, they have been applied not having noticed how much the agreements could be incisive within the working mobility in our countries. We have, we have realized over the years that we are providing a service of considerable help to the companies involved. We are offering a great service to workers who posted by the companies do not lose, lose the acquired rights and the application of a contractual rules of their state. We are giving also a big service to the contracting entities and to all those who are interested in continuing the works since all the action pursued in the construction sector by Italian, Austrian, French and German companies are carried out in the maximum transparency, without resorting to gimmicks that disengage them from the application of the law. By now, there are thousands of cases over the years of mobility using this exoneration from the registration in the host country's welfare fund. But it is now necessary to make this ex exchange of information related to the posting, of course, fluid through its networking and to share a part of this data also with subjects external to the cosignatories of the convention. For this reason, we have hypothesized this research for the creation of a database that allows a dialogue, I hope, in a wider perspective. Thank you all for your attention. You haven't eaten me, so I am fine. Thank you. <laughs>